Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Barnett of Apostolic Gatherings Network, and I have a good lesson for us this morning. Very good lesson. It's going to be titled Rapture or Resurrection? Rapture or Resurrection? So, a friend of mine been asking me questions about the rapture. Um, Excuse me, because you know it's been hotly debated for years, probably over the last a hundred years about uh, rapture. Because a lot of people, you know, they fit themselves into camps: pre-tribulation rapture, mid-trib rapture, post-trib rapture, whatever. And then there's it causes division in the body of Christ, which is which is sad, but. I got to studying it and I come to find out that I already knew rapture was not a biblical term but I never studied the origin of it and to my surprise there was an uh, Irish evangelist by the name of John Darby Nelson and he um, used the term rapture and the reason for that is because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where the Apostle Paul is talking about in the, the, the trump of God, um, he's going to uh, bring back his people. Remember, he says it's going to, and those that are dead will rise first, and then those that will remain will meet him in the air. We will be caught up to meet him in the air. Well, that word caught up, caught, in the Greek means to seize to capture to like shoom, take by force to seize but in uh, John Darby Nelson's day instead of using seizing they like to use the word rapture rapture up uh, 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 your for capturing and so then that's why it took off but in uh, using the rapture, they formulated doctrines of raptures. <laughs> and uh, then hence we have pre-tribulation rapture. Where people think that, you know, it, it, because the Apostle John is caught up to heaven in chapter 4. They think that's the rapture. So those are the pre-tribbers. And then there's uh, between chapter 6 and 7 of Revelation. John sees people from every nation and every language before the throne worshiping God. So some people say, well, there's a rapture. So that's a mid-trib, but that's not even really in the middle of the tribulation. And so we actually, what the Lord spoke to me was, remember when I told the disciples, no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. No man's gonna, nobody knows when the rapture is gonna happen, or actually the resurrection is gonna happen, and no person knows when the second coming is gonna happen. We just don't know. So to um, jump on board with some type of tribulation rapture, whether it's pre, mid, or post, is literal foolishness on our part, because you and I don't know if we're going to be alive at that time so we've got to be right with God at all times we've got to be ready right now not wait for well I'll go in the rapture when uh, no, don't, uh, come on there's no biblical stance for that so like myself the rapture is actually the resurrection because nobody used the word rapture until a, a little over a hundred years ago but that's like 150 years ago. But the disciples used the same terms that Jesus used, and that was the resurrection. So we have got to be ready to make it in the resurrection of the just, because we don't know when it's going to happen. We just know we've got to be ready. So let's stop all the division 
Uh, you know, some people say, well, if they don't believe in pre-trib, they're not going to heaven. That's ridiculous. The devil's got you fooled if you believe that. So, Jesus in John chapter 5, verse 28, 29, he says that don't be marveled, don't be, don't be confused, don't be, you know, don't be, you know, blown away by this. He goes, there will be a day when the dead that are in their graves will hear his voice and they will come forth. And he says, okay, and now people say, well, that's the rapture he's talking about. Well, he's talking about, yeah, it's the rapture, but let's use the right term. It's the resurrection. Because the apostles and prophets, and all the elders and pastors of all the early church, they never used the term rapture. They used the term resurrection. That's why in Hebrews chapter 6, he starts talking about the doctrines of repentance and faith toward God and, and um, repentance. And I said that already. Baptisms, right? Receiving of the Holy Spirit, laying on of hands, doctrines of resurrection. All right. So he says that they will rise up. Some unto the resurrection of the just and others to the resurrection of damnation of those who did evil. So we read it. John chapter five. It's your homework. Verse 28, 29. And so Jesus is talking about resurrection. So when Paul in Thessalonians is talking, he's ta he's using almost kind of the same verbiage Jesus used. So he's talking about the resurrection. But we say, oh, but that's what he's talking about, the rapture. No. Forget the rapture. The rapture is not the correct term. Yes, we're going to get caught up in the air. Yes, Jesus is going to blow the trumpet and take us home. But it's the resurrection of the just. According to the scriptures. Hallelujah. And here's the glorious thing of it. You just got to be right with God. You got to repent for your sins. Turn away from your sins. Be godly sorrow works repentance. Have faith toward God. Believe that he is the savior. And that he will save you if you repent. And, and then get baptized in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of those sins. And receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, which is resurrection power, because His Spirit is going to resurrect you. And now you're ready for the resurrection of what many of you call the rapture, the resurrection of the just. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, it's a glorious thing. It's a wonderful thing. But we've got to... Our, our problem is, is we get so caught up in traditions of man in religious traditions and religious bylaws and policies and soon enough it be it becomes the authority unfortunately people are, follow it blindly to their own hurt because Jesus said you know can the blind lead the bind no because that blind leader is going to fall in a ditch and everybody else is going to follow that leader right into the ditch with him We've got to search the scriptures like Jesus said. So, rapture or resurrection? It's resurrection. So, you and I got to make it in the resurrection. We've got to get right with God. We've got to get saved the biblical way, the correct way. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, the, hey, the Bible says... <clears throat> Throughout all of the epistles, starting with the book of Acts, they all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Even Matthew, when he says, go baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I already taught a lesson on that. It's called Matthew's master Masterpiece. He's talking about the proper noun, not the common nouns. He mentions the common nouns, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To direct you to the one whose name you need to be baptized in. Because he is the father. <coughs> the eternal spirit in creation. He is the son. The human body. That Christ was mad. That God was manifested in. to For redemption of mankind. And he is the Holy Spirit. That can now live inside of us. Through redemption. Woo. Hallelujah. So what's his name? 
the proper noun, the proper, the name is Jesus Christ, or in Hebrew Jewish, Yeshua HaMessiah. So if you want resurrection power and you want to make it in the resurrection of the just, the rapture, you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got to put on that name. Who is the name of the Father? Jesus says, I come in my Father's name. Who is the name of the Son? Jesus. You should call him Emmanuel, God with us, right? Who is the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, I got to go away so I can come again unto you. I will give you the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. I will come to you. The Bible says it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. So we got to be baptized in Jesus' name. If you aren't baptized in Jesus' name, and you'll repent for your sins, turn away from your sins, and you'll have faith toward God, believe in Jesus, I can baptize you in Jesus' name. I can help you receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. I can help you. God will do it for you. Ask and you shall receive. Hallelujah. So let's not get caught up in rapture dogma. Let's get caught up in proper apostolic early church doctrine and teachings and let's teach the resurrection we want to make it into the resurrection of the just and get caught up to meet him in the air and we want to miss the resurrection of the unjust the damnation the condemnation and that's going to be at the white throne judgment toward the end of the book of revelation we don't want to be in that no we don't so you should check the scriptures for yourself. And after you've seen John, read John chapter 5, and you've read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and you've read Matthew chapter 24, talking about the end times, of when people will be caught away. And when you see that, and you realize what Hebrews chapter 6 says about the doctrines of the resurrections, and then if you decide you want to make it in to the resurrection, then read the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Then the same chapter 2, verses 37 through 39, especially verse, thir uh, ver th verse 38. And then go down to verse, uh, verses 44, 42 through 44, and they stood steadfastly in the apostles teachings praise God and then then you can say you are saved biblically like the first apostles and prophets of the New Testament so if you want to make it in the rapture let's go back to the proper term of resurrection and let's obey the scriptures and make it in the resurrection of Jesus Christ once you read Romans chapter 6 know you not those who are baptized into Christ in other words being baptized in Jesus name you're baptized into his death so that hey just as he rose you can rise too and then you keep reading on all the way to chapter 8 and he talks about the spirit being able to quicken your mortal bodies why is that because it's a resurrection power Woo! hallelujah so God bless you rapture or resurrection let's go with resurrection hallelujah so god bless you you be blessed it's your responsibility to make it in the resurrection of the just make your calling and election sure escape this perverted perverse generation like peter told them and get yourselves baptized in jesus name and get yourself full of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues and walk in newness of life with Jesus Christ in obedience to his written word and to the prompting of his spirit, his voice in Jesus name. God bless you. You be blessed. This is Charles Barnett of Apostolic, Apostolic Galleries Network, AGN. Peace of Christ unto you. Amen.